vision Hope to a new generation Together we can live and learn Yes, we're one family I'm the Alex Show the world of teaching changed overnight in March 2020 when the Jamaican government ordered schools shut due to COVID-19. Now this meant a big change for students, for parents, and for educators. A big change that we're all still trying to adjust to. Big deal. Hello teachers. <laughs> Welcome to the Arabic show. All right, so let's talk. Can you remove your mask? Let's talk big change that we're still trying to deal with. So we have, um, which school you're representing? St. Mary's All Aid School. Right, Jacqueline Hope and? Don Robin Primary. Right, what's your name? King Kingsley Cares. Kingsley. And? Gosford Lawrence, NCU. Northern Caribbean University. All right, so of course, Jacqueline is my grade two teacher. <laughs> All right, I'm familiar with Don Robin and I went to NCU. All right, so my grade two teacher is not about to tell you how good a student, you know, I am, you know, always quiet, you know, and, and well behaved. But we're not going to talk about it today, okay? <laughs> all right. Not so at tell all. me, we, um, Jackie, we're still trying to cope with COVID. Teaching, what's the challenge? The challenges are numerous. First and foremost, it has to do with internet connection. Mm. I'm from above rocks, and I've been at the word above, we are really above the rocks. <laughs> And so it is a challenge for us to get internet connections. So for the children to get online, they have no internet access mm -hmm. and the communities, they're really in the bush. Mm -hmm. So for them to get into all the nooks and crannies of above rocks to provide internet service, it is a big challenge. But, but it's, a, it's also a big change for you because you've always been in the classroom. How many years have you been in the classroom? 33 years. 33 wow. years old. Yes. 33, right? So, yes. So you went into the classroom when I was just three years old. <laughs> a, lot, <laughs> a long time. Right? So what's the difference now for you? And, and what's the struggle for you as well? I'm used to seeing them face to face. And so the struggle was to adjust myself to use in this online platform. And yourself, we're trying now to learn about this platform as well. I didn't know much about it. <laughs> all I know was about the chalk and the talk. Yeah. So now I'm sitting in front of this thing all day staring at, and I'm like, what do I need to touch to get them to respond? Yeah. Sometimes I bump them off because I touch the wrong thing. <laughs> at my age, technology is kind of a, uh, this kind of technology is new. 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 Um, and King, I, Kingsley, for you, what, what's, what's the, you represent Don Robin, mm -hmm. and you probably do that. A lot of students in the corporate area, probably some from the country as well. What's the challenge? What's the big change for you as well? And how many years have you been in the classroom too? Well, actually, I've been in the classroom 28 years. This, this, this year is going to be long time. It's a very long time. Well, you know, this paradigm shifting, as my colleagues said, has a dramatic impact on us. Right, we were not accustomed to this type of platform. Yeah. Yes, not only for myself, but you know, all stakeholders. But um, as she rightly said, um, mm -hmm. internet and um, not being supervised. Some of the students can't get the work, and um, it limits you to in reaching out to the students. Oh, you would have really loved to. Is your work harder now? Yes, it's a bit harder than usual. Right. Because as she rightly said, you have them face to face, so you're more, you know, as a more impact on them. How um, many students would you usually have in a classroom setting? Oh, I done Robin. Um, it was quite a whole lot. It was 45. No, um, I have 31. No. On, so, online? Um, yes. So some, some are now missing yes. out? Yes. Well, to be frank, I must commend my class. Although other student teachers might be having a problem, but. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to try to motivate them, and that's one of the things I do. Try to work with this type of motivation is big now. Yes, to get them. So, um, another day I'll have out of the 31, 30. Oh. Yes, in max. All right, so Gosford, down in uh, Manchester, mm. Northern Caribbean University. Of course, now you're dealing with students who are much older and probably a lot more unwilling yes, <laughs> than the younger students. What's the atmosphere now like for you? It's a much more challenging atmosphere, I must say. The, I teach a lot of practical courses. Right. What are those courses? 
<laughs> intro to television, um, techniques of video editing okay. and production lighting. Right? So there are a lot of there are a lot of practical courses and we depend heavily on face to face interaction. So when COVID hit and we had to thankfully I wasn't teaching all of them at the same time when COVID hit, so <laughs> dealt with it in stages. But it did create a lot of challenges. We had to kill classes, face-to-face -face classes almost immediately. Unfortunately for me, it, it hit at a time when we were just going into the practical elements of oh. the class. You know, so that class in particular got a, a, a little extra time to do their final exams because we had to, the whole country world really, had to figure out how to go ahead yeah. with, with um, this COVID thing going What's forward. the general attitude of the students? Well, you, you, you will have those that are willing to go the extra mile, of course, and you will have those who find every excuse possible to give you not to do the work. Um, <laughs> as the colleague said, I think internet I issues, device <laughs> issues, everything. They live on campus, they live in the, every, anywhere you live, internet issues or device issues, just, just not doing it all. Serious problem. It. Yes. What are some of the, the strategies that you use um, so you can deliver? effectively online because and, and I know that probably school might have a strategy but for each teacher you have to adjust accordingly how do you do it the first thing I have to do is to find out for my students how many of them have devices mm. and then I go about that's also a problem I go about and I beg I go through the register and I find all the pastors who sent me is all at school and I beg a device I beg so my children can get a device and then I beg credit for those who have phones. Mm -hmm. So I'll call and I say, listen, this child needs credit to go to class. Mm -hmm. Put the credit on the phone. So I go ahead and I beg. And then I say to them, those who attend online classes, there's going to be a treat for you at the end of the month. So I take a note. Mm -hmm. And if you're early for class, and if you are participating, then I beg again and I ask, what do you really want? A child said, I want a bicycle. So I'm begging a bicycle for that child. <laughs> yes. You haven't gotten the bicycle yet? No, but All somebody right. promised me the bicycle and I hope they're listening so they can deliver the bicycle. So I promised them <laughs> things. And um, I, I said to them, if you could just imagine that it is online class. I'll call them ahead of time and I say, class starts at 8 o'clock. Are you up? And they'll say, yes. They'll say, get yourself ready for class. In the middle of my class, I said to them, oh, I'm tired too. Let us stand and do some exercise and we'll crack a little so joke. So it's a good opportunity for you now to do yes. exercise. Yes, I said, let us stand and Simon says, and I say to them, come on now, sit and let us do the work. And in between, you'll allow them to make a little joke, just like you're in class. Right. So I, I allow it to be like as real as possible, even though I'm not seeing them. All right, so we take a break. When we come back, we talk more about how the pandemic has affected teaching right here in Jamaica. Welcome back. We're talking to three teachers about how the pandemic has affected teaching right here in Jamaica. And we're going to talk now to Kingsley from Don Robin um, Primary. Kingsley, one of the things that we, we have been recognizing and hearing in the news is that school would have been a place of refuge for a lot of children, yes. a lot of children. How do you feel, not necessarily um, specific to your school, but having knowledge of this and, and, and what, what, what are the concerns that you have? There are a lot of concerns, right? Um, you know, um, most parents used to rely on the school. They used to see the school as a daycare oh, yes. to take care mm -hmm. of the students. So they will. <laughs> the Don parents Robin. are begging school <laughs> to open, please. Yeah, so they will, they will let the students off as early as 5.30 in the mornings and they pick up as late as 8 in the night, p.m. Right, so they see the school. So now this pandemic, it caused a, a great impact on them. No more daycare, free daycare, <laughs> and stuff like that. However, um, as a school and as a teacher, you have to you know, be innovative to you know, try to reach to them and to provide right. the needs necessary in terms of security. And, and support. Them, and because support. a yes. lot of us parents, we, we can't, to be, to be frank right. and to be honest, a lot of us parents really cannot do the schoolwork that these students are doing now. That's, that's, that's right. It's, it, it's just a different thing than, than I was growing up. Mm -hmm. That's right. And the type of message that they will send to you, you're saying, um, 
the, 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 the work to them. They will send back a voice note to tell you um, <laughs> a long voice note that you are filling up their phones and you are doing all of that. So you have to you know, be innovative and try to find other methods or, or to reach them. Either well, Like for us now at Don Robin, we have a, a drop off and pick up day every Wednesday mm -hmm. so they will come drop so even if they are saying we don't we have an internet issue we have in a one phone that is supplying maybe five siblings and stuff like that because we have that mm. so um the guidance counselors will come on board and you know through the ministry of education they try to get some devices for them and although you get them and give to them as me said you don't even see them come they come one time online they are not there well, what are your biggest concerns, uh, um, Gosford? The, from the courses I teach, the biggest concern for me is the fact that the things that we would have had face-to-face -face mm -hmm. will be missed, mm. right? And there's going to be a generation of students out there that will <laughs> not get what they yeah, should, gotten, should mm. have gotten because of the pandemic, right? Um, we have to find ways to, may not necessarily, I don't want to use the word shortcut, but we have to find ways to you know, shortcut the, the, the whole teaching assignments yeah. of the things that they want them to learn. To, because now, well, like for what, in what I teach, we try to stay away from phones in terms of doing videography. I try to teach a proper thing in terms of proper camera and stuff. But no, they are not, and the department would supply these equipment. Mm -hmm. But no, they are not there every day to take advantage of it. They will have to now give assignments using phones, personal computers and stuff where we didn't really want to do that, you know, to ensure that we control exactly what they learn and get a proper thing from day one. So that is one of my gravest concerns. Well, um, Jacqueline, um, as a mother and mm -hmm. as, a, as a teacher and mother, to so many students, what are your concerns? Especially that we know that school was a place of school is a place of re refuge, um, for a meal, yes, um, for for attention, mm -hmm. yes, as well. What are your concerns? What are some of the stories that you have been hearing among the teachers as well? And and w what are your fears for for these students? As as you mentioned, food. We had this breakfast program. I was one of the children to be early too. And so they would come up very early for their breakfast. Mm. No, they're not having any breakfast. And the parents will call me. Mr. Better come for them in Canada, you're coming. I have nothing for them to eat. And, and, and that's true, you know? Yes. And so what I do when I buy my groceries, I take out a little here, a little there. And I will take it to the parents. I say, send the child to collect it. And they will come and they'll collect it. Because I know they're really hungry. When I see some on the street, they're just walking up and down. There's nobody at home to stay with them. And so they would have been at school where they would have the company of the other children, plus the teachers. Before the total lockdown, I used to have them on a Thursdays. Just to come in on a Thursdays to mark the books and to talk with them. And I have to remind them, COVID is still on. Because they all run on the rush. You, Miss me glad me see you. Miss me long for see you. <laughs> Miss we all right. And I'm, stay, we, we have to be keeping the old protocol story. But they really miss that company and they miss having a meal. And they also miss the fact that I can talk to somebody. Yeah. A student called me and he said, Miss, I'm not doing so well. And we had a long talk. Yeah. He was just tired of his parents. <laughs> <laughs> He's home with his parents That's and right. miss them keep bothering me. <laughs> Miss, do this, do that. So I said to them, said to him, okay, I understand. But well, you have to do what they ask you to do. But say to them in a very nice way, I am tired, can I do it a little later? All right, so we take a break. When we come back, we continue our conversation about the pandemic and teaching in Jamaica. We're talking about the new ways of teaching and learning during the COVID-19 um, um, pandemic. Um, Kingsley. We have the challenge of this, the students trying to cope with being in the same space with their parents mm -hmm. for the entire day. A lot of the relationships at home is not the best. How can we support the children 
and how can we support the parents um, during this time as well? Well, as my colleague rightly said, there are myriads of problems, but what we at Dunrobin, we do in collaboration with the guidance counselor, we have um, several type of meeting with the parents. We have parents alone, how to deal with the pandemic and the schooling. Are the parents yes. coming to the meeting? Well, on a scale of 10, we have like maybe 85% responded. The others would love to come. Right. You don't see them, mm. right? And we have that for the students uh, as well. Well, um, in grade six in particular, we try to motivate the students despite the myriad of problems that yeah. they may be experiencing at home. You know, encourage them. Mm -hmm. um, there are times uh, may ask a simple little question and I give a little token economy, you know, a little <laughs> credit because that's the only thing you can give them yeah. online. So they, they look forward to that. And with that, you capture them. Right. Um, again, some of them will not even want to turn their cameras on for you to see them because of the problem that they they are experiencing at home. Despite the fact that you educate the parents and say, you know, find a little area conducive for that, so the, the students you will not be affecting them. Sometimes you see parents passing, you know, not dressing appropriately, mm -hmm. and so that's it can be very embarrassing. And, and we have seen some of the videos on social yes. media, yes. as we well. can say. You understand? So, with that in mind, we have to try and to you know help them where that is concerned. Wow, um, but, but um, might I interject uh -huh. here though? Mm -hmm. It's it's a challenge for the parents as well. Yeah. Yes. You're not used to having them under your feet all day, day long. So, so it's also a level of frustration and depression yes. for the parents it as well. It is, it mm. is, it is. I am a mother. Mm. My children are grown. But my granddaughter lives with me. And sometimes I have to say to her, go find something else to do. <laughs> go, go read a book. <laughs> yes, I go find something else to do. Right. Because mm -hmm. she, she's just all over the place. Yeah. And I'm not used to having her around me. I mean, 24 summer because she should be at school. Well. And then their outdoor exposure has been limited yeah. as yeah. well. Yes. 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 Because you might be teaching having interference. Uh, you hear loud music playing and you said, what's that? They say, it's next door, sir. And they can't do anything. If mommy goes there, what will happen? So all of those, we have to factor and try to deal with it. You understand? Um, Kingsley, do... <laughs> how do you see the future? Because um, I, I don't see us necessarily um, getting back to, to much mm -hmm. of, of what we're used to. Um, what are your thoughts about online teaching as we, as we move forward? Um, Gosford. Okay. Um, I, I really hope we do go back. I think it's much better. Mm -hmm. um, that face-to-face -face interaction with the students, much, much better than, you know, we've seen the effects of students being in front of a screen for too long. Yeah, I mean, even yeah. big people have problems being in front of a screen for too long. So you can imagine kids, mm -hmm. you know. Um, mm -hmm. And the fact is, when they're in front of a screen, you're, you're not totally controlling what they're seeing. You know, yeah, they, can be doing, they can be doing anything on that screen and you don't know. Um, when we're teaching classes more time, you can't even see it. Sometimes they ask a question they're and asked. no response. Or they're like, <laughs> oh, sir, I'm never here. What are going on? Um, we can repeat. And you're like, hmm. Sure right? Idea, right? So no, sometimes you have to take a very hard line with them sometimes because sometimes you know, you can't tell it's a genuine problem yeah. versus just excuses. At St. Mary's All Age, how are the teachers supporting each other? We have what you call checking in. And so we ask everyone, I have devotion with the incidental, I know the acting principal. So in, I'm teaching my class and I'm doing administrative work as well. So we have devotion every morning. I have devotion every morning with the teachers. And we have what you call checking in. And so each teacher will check in with at least two other teachers for the day to make sure that that person is doing well. Yeah. Because they are having a challenge as well. And so what, we, what I also do is at the end of the month, we have what you call drop everything online. Mm-hmm. So we have this online social okay. where we laugh and we talk and we give joke and we just find ways to get the mind going and to take it off the stress of teaching online and the stress of having to do with the children who are not responding and the parents who are 
bombarding them with all sorts of questions and mm. nuisances. But we, we do that so we have a healthy balance with teaching with our social life as well. well what are two um, lessons that you have, um, you, you have taken away um, so far or, or you have come to so far with teaching online um, that you think might be good for other teachers um, to hear um, and probably um, could help guide um, the curriculum or the guideline mm -hmm. for teaching online? My takeaway is we didn't see ourselves where we are now with this online teaching. And so it is a way of educating yourselves. Mm -hmm. Too many of us were complacent and too comfortable with this chalk and the talk. Would not go beyond that. And so now it gives you a chance to broaden your horizon. We have to go and find information because the children have the same information that you now have. Mm -hmm. At the click of a button, they can go research it. My thing is this, that um, once you get the students to the spot or to the island where you want them to be, because it, it can be frustrating. You have to look at it, you know. For everybody. Again, the, the, the online can be very good, you know. But it all depends on how it is, you know, administered Delivered, and right. stuff. Uh, if you get the students to re recognize rather that, you know, this is a normal school because this is what we do. Um, on a Monday, the students wear their uniforms so they, they get a sense of coming to school. Cool, right. Yes. So um, a Tuesday, you know, they dress down, maybe just a T-shirt or something. Then on a Friday, they have their physical education. For you, um, right. Gosford. I will just say, hey, embrace it. Yeah. It's not going anywhere. Not you have to all. embrace it. If you don't embrace it, it's going to continue being difficult. Yes, that's true. So you have to really embrace it. Um, find out what the challenges are mm -hmm. and meet them head on. Teachers, thank you so very much mm -hmm. for sharing with us today on the Alwick Show. There's a lot mm -hmm. to catch up on. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of students that need help and a lot of parents need help. Let's um, all see how we can be in contact um, to help support you know, our stakeholders. Yes. And, and, and right? so true, because even right now, at the guest, the Ministry of Education, they're late in what they're doing right, right now. I know I hear that yes. teachers are going to be appraised online. Yes. All right, so that's another story. <laughs> so we want to thank the teachers, Jacqueline, um, Kinsley, and Gosford, for sharing with us today on The Alric Show. Parents, please see how best you can support the children. And teachers, continue to be your best and continue to learn as much as you can so that we can help these children to adjust. We want to thank you so much for joining us for The Alric Show. The Alric Show will be back next week. Alric Show.